Hello and welcome to the Hub on CGTN. I'm Wang Guan in Beijing. Beijing has just held a forum to mark the 130th anniversary of the founding of the modern Olympic movement. This forum on world civilization and the Olympics was attended by members of the Chinese and foreign Olympic committees, as well as scholars and athletes around the world. China has been in the forefront of the Olympic movement, reflecting on the values of the Olympic Manifesto as enshrined by Pierre de Coubertin 130 years ago. Now, to renew China's commitment and appreciation to the Olympic spirit, the Olympic cultural scrolls rekindle the bond that has united the Olympic family across generations and throughout the world, advocating for a community of shared future. Listen to Lo Xiaoqi, president of Civilization Magazine, to talk about these scrolls. 创造了古代奥运会从那一年起十年前的二零一二年这两大奥运文化遗产产生于面向世界的重要纽带 Today, I'm very honored to be joined in Paris by Gilles Lecoq, Vice President of the Pierre de Coubertin French Committee. Also, we're joined by Claude Azema, member of the French Olympic Committee, and also by French singer Julian. And in Beijing, we have Professor Wang Yiwei, Jean Monet, Chair, Professor and Director of Center for EU Studies at Renmin University of China. Um, a gentleman, a very warm welcome to our program. I mean, I think this is a very timely discussion as we're celebrating, uh, you know, the start of the World Cup in Qatar, um, which coincided with the 130th anniversary of this very, very important document, a very important spirit initiated by Pierre de Coubertin, your fellow countryman. Um, I, I just want to, first of all, get your thoughts on the Olympic Manifesto, 130 years on. We know what that is, faster, higher, stronger. Together was added by Thomas Bach, of course, last year. Uh, what does this Olympic Manifesto, the Olympic spirit mean to each and every one of you? Um, why don't I start with you, Mr. Lecoq? Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, blending sport with uh, culture and education, 
Olympism seeks to create a way of life based on the joy of effort, uh, the educational value of good example, social responsibility and respect for universal fundamental ethical principles. But not only during the Olympic and Paralympic games, essentially during the four years of an Olympia. Yeah, uh, Claude, what about you? What would be your answer to this question? Yeah, right. Uh, originally, it was a very good idea for uh, to uh, to approach from the former Olympic Games in antiquity, and uh, the spirit is a good one to say uh, all together, speak together, and to search it for us also. But together is very important. But uh, what you have to pay attention now is not to uh, use uh, some. Uh, uh, political ID first before the sport ID, the uh, gathering of uh, everybody. So we have to keep the spirit, but to pay attention with some uh, uh, deviance about uh, many, many, many things. And often more and more we see in, uh, in sport, generally, not only in Olympic, oh, Olympic Games, some uh, political uh, action. And uh, we have to, uh, to try to, uh, to avoid that. Yeah, exactly. There's so many challenges, you know, racism, um, inequality, uh, doping, uh, you name it. Uh, but Julian, you're an artist. Um, yeah. How, I mean, what is your understanding of this Olympic manifesto as an artist? My art, which is music and sport, is very, very clear. It's uh, based on um, work, uh, perseverance, uh, emotions. So um, I, I, just, I just think that when Pierre de Coubertin uh, give a new refreshment uh, 130 years ago to the Olympic Games that we used to fought as Romanian or Greek. Or, uh, and so uh, many people don't know the true uh, genesis of the, 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 of the Olympics. It gives uh, uh, the foundation uh, and the structures of the Olympics because human beings need structures to to uh, to be to be to be to, to feel insecurity. So now we have the, 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 since Pierre de Coubertin, we have a, a real professional aspect of the Olympics without forgetting the the, the first goals of the Olympics, which is the performance, the uh, the, the unification of the human for one in one moment, in um, in uh, in today's actuality, which is really really separating people, nations, and so and so and so. Music, which is my dom domain, and uh, sports is based on effort, emotions, work, and perseverance. And that's the, the thing I keep in mind all the time. So Professor Vaughan, you've written extensively about the importance of sticking with the Olympic spirit. Uh, tell us your understanding of what the Olympic spirit, the Olympic uh, manifesto means to not just China, but around the world. Well, the... Uh, Winston Churchill has a famous argument uh, that uh, George or Joy is better than World War War. And uh, Mr. Gouverdon, I think, created the uh, modern uh, Olympic Games uh, movement, also sports, sports, better than World War War. 130 years ago, uh, when the Fran uh, France lived in the shadow of the crucial French war, so uh, Gouverdon created this uh, movement, uh, actually want to uh, get out from the war and then uh, strive for peace. And also the peace is uh, uh, more reliant on the young generation. So from the game, not the war, and then to uh, cultivate uh, with the world culture. I think that's basically the spirit. But throughout the past 130 years, uh, we've seen two world wars. We've seen the Cold War. We've seen regional conflicts and geopolitics, geopoliticking um, nonstop, basically. Um, how, how do you reconcile that fact with um, the fact that we're also pursuing this Olympic spirit. Um, there has been so much emphasis on this Olympic manifesto. Uh, the Olympic Games have suffered, uh, uh, you know, World War I, World War II, but even more people worry about the US and the China's uh, confrontation, so-called the new Cold War. Uh, nearly two years ago, President Xi Jinping made a very important uh, speech at the Davos uh, dialogue process. He argumented that uh, uh, the better for the China, US, and any other uh, major powers and international relations is uh, competing for excellency for each other, uh, not beating uh, others uh, with the rest uh, uh, arena. I think that's very important. It's a fair competition, not a use of the force or a decouple of the uh, new Cold War. I think that's the hope for the human uh, kind. Yeah, we've been seeing the uniting power of sport, uh, not least of which. Uh include uh, you know the west germany and east germany forming a united team walking to the stadium for during the olympics and also the dprk and uh, 
uh, Republic for Korea in the South, uh, forming an alliance, uh, you know, walking into the stadium for the Winter Olympics, uh, you name it. Exactly. Actually, um, International Olympic Committee President Thomas Bach sent a congratulation letter to the forum. Um, it was read by the president of Beijing News, uh, Liu Junsheng, one of the event organizers. First of all, I, I want all of you to hear uh, the message from the IOC president, Thomas Bach. Uh, let's give it a listen. The Olympic Games are the only event that brings the entire world together in peaceful competition. At the Olympic Games, the best athletes of the world are competitors in sport, but at the same time, they're living peacefully together on the one roof in the Olympic Village. The athletes show the world that we can only go faster, we can only aim higher, we can only become stronger if we stand together. The word together tells us we need more solidarity because there is no peace without solidarity. President Lecoq, what do you think are the major contributions of this Olympic spirit to uh, mankind coming together and for nations to unite? The vision of Olympic spirit was born in a very complex uh, social and political context where a change of civilization was underway both in France, in Europe, and beyond the European borders. In this, Pierre de Coubertin was a welcome spokesman of collective needs that he federated around him. Two examples. Uh, the International Peace Bureau and the International Labour Office. At the beginning of the uh, Olympic spirit, uh, it was not so easy to develop uh, such uh, charter because a uh, lot of complexity was to be uh, uh, regulated in, in the world uh, at the end of the 19th century. Claude, let me turn to you. Uh, what has made the Olympic spirit so enduring, in your opinion, and what have been some of the challenges through the decades and the centuries? Hey, you have a big challenge, Mr. Lang uh, is completely right. It's, uh, at the beginning, uh, Olympic Games mean peace and stop war, stop fighting. And now I think we forget often this uh, this aim in the Olympic Games. If it was only possible to stop the, some war, some conflict, uh, during uh, one, two or three weeks, it will be wonderful, but we have uh, to fight a lot, lot about this. I think, yeah, don't, don't forget that uh, the main aim of the Olympic Games was to, it was peace before the, between the, the participants. So uh, you have to, to fight in this way. Together is a good day to, to, to say together, because at the beginning, we have no wife in the Olympic Games. Now we need to have a, uh, equality with men and women, and also a peace and all together, but uh, uh, quiet and don't, don't, don't forget the same, I think. As we speak, there is, is a war going on in Eastern Europe between Russia and Ukraine, I mean, there are regional conflicts as well. Do you think perhaps the, the goal of higher, faster, stronger and together is too lofty? Difficult to ask to some uh, to a country to stop a war to, to the two countries to stop to to fight. It's very difficult, but I think we have we have to think to think about uh, why not. Uh, it can decide. I don't think what the uh, Mr. Putin, Mr. Zelensky, to say okay, stop to fight uh, during uh, uh, two weeks. It will be very so 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 wonderful that I can't imagine. But I think we have to think us, the uh, main people in the sport in the world, we have to fight in this way. All right, and uh, at this. Uh, in this way, I think the, um, the forum in China was a good thing to uh, to speak about uh, peace and all the uh, civilization in the world. I think we have we have to come on, on this way. Julian, what do you think? Uh, One hundred and thirty years on, uh, how do you see the relevance of the Olympic spirit? I think that, as Claude said, more than ever, the, um, instead of taking guns and, and rifles and uh, use um, you know your legs, your heart your performances as a, as a, as a, as an athlete it's is a way of of fighting the other guy fighting the other of a nation through sport psychologist but it's easy to understand that it's a relief it's true Claude is right it's we are not naive it's very complicated actually to to to, sure. to ask the world to stop and their wars for for two weeks but one thing i think it's that we should never have to uh, boycott one nation even if there is political stuff i think every nation even 
from a side or another should participate to the Olympics because the athletes are exceptions of all it's a part of all the those stuff you know what I mean so more than ever to answer to your question it's useful to to breathe and to fight but in the sport you know not with with the with again if only countries could um, meet each other in the soccer pitch or in the basketball court or even in the golf course <laughs> exactly i mean exactly. the world would have been yeah. a much better place than um yeah. in that uh, you know in the battlefield professor wang what aspects of the chinese culture um do you see as identical to that of the olympic spirit i mean china has been talked has been very enthusiastic in staging um not just the, the summer olympics but also the winter olympics Traditional Chinese contribution to the uh, Olympic Games, actually, like the 2000 years ago, the Confucius, a very famous argument of the six R's for all the gentlemen, uh, that uh, ritual and uh, uh, music, uh, archery, and uh, horse riding, and calligraphy, and uh, mathematics uh, are the basic of the achievements of all the gentlemen. Friendship first, and the competition second. I think that's uh, inclusiveness and uh, cultivation and, and uh, self-improvement, the spirit, that's the uh, Chinese understanding of the games. Sports, uh, as, uh, as a, uh, physics and the spirit, uh, harmonies, I think uh, this is a traditional Chinese culture. Uh, and also uh, the game, uh, it's not just for uh, the winner, takes all. Uh, I think the participation or inclusiveness is very important, uh, whether they're strong or uh, weak, uh, actually in a fair competition, uh, they can uh, have, uh, uh, I think, the frightful result. And the Chinese contribution, not just the creation of Chinese culture, but also China uh, make the uh, Olympic Games to be from the noble to uh, the ordinary Chinese uh, people. Uh, for, for instance, in this winter Olympic Games, uh, the Chinese slogan is to let the 300 million people join the uh, ice and uh, sports uh, uh, activities. I yeah, think that's yeah. very important. The game is for every people. Uh, uh, so that's very important to make the, everybody, everybody to from join these exercises to make healthy. It's not that the athletes can benefit from the championship. Professor Wang, actually, you just talked about the, the Chinese culture and the relevance of the Chinese culture to the Olympic spirit. Um, uh, President De Kock, uh, I'm wondering, how do you look at the relationship between the Chinese culture and the Olympic spirit? I think that there is, uh, with this word harmony, something to do between Chinese culture and European culture and uh, other culture. And I want perhaps add some other uh, perspective to, to develop something with, uh, uh, with Chinese uh, uh, colleagues. It's what, what we, we can call in sport, the meaningful sporting life associated with inner joy. Mm -hmm. I think it's... Uh, perspective, we can be uh, uh, closed to the, the world harmony. And I think that here in Europe, in France, but also in Europe, we have a lot to learn about the psychological, spiritual, and cultural virtues associated with uh, Chinese martial arts and other specific Chinese physical activity. Uh, we must admit that sport is just a part of the richness of physical activities, and perhaps uh, we can discover in, in China uh, some uh, physical activities uh, we can uh, develop in other countries in the spirit of Olympic charter. Not during okay. Olympic Games, but during uh, the Olympiad with mainly youth people. Yeah, I mean, young people are so important. I mean, the, the whole key to uh, a promising future. Um, uh, Julian, you're an artist. Um, how do you promote the Olympic spirit through arts? Um, <laughs> good question. I, I did two years ago a song which was called One Heart. It, it, mm -hmm. it was a simple message. One, one heart for many nations. So uh, that was my first part. And then you, uh, recently... Um, to participate to a song which is called Run the Olympics Young People and I create sentences and I sung that song. I think you have that song maybe.
avec le même cœur olympique. Toutes nos voix sont unies et résonnent à l'infini. Heureux d'être là dans ce lieu si magique. All right, so Mr. Azema, uh, we know that bullet type games or you know hard balls uh, in medals. Uh, there's sports with a comparable, um, comparatively speaking, small group of participants. As the president of World Confederation of uh, Boule Sports, um, how do you plan to take actions to expand its global footprint and its global influence, um, perhaps one day making it an, an Olympic sport? Uh, you know, the ball are more important than everybody thinks in the world, and it's very, very developed. Our aim is to develop uh, in new new. Uh, in your country by helping people to have some uh, uh, empire, some technical people, we help them to do that. And we have uh, something very strong for uh, other sport. Mainly we play pétanque, for example, uh, by double, mixed double, a man and a woman together. Yeah. So in uh, many sports now you have a uh, mixed uh, competition, but it's often by relay, uh, well, for skiing, for judo. And in, uh, in board in pétanque, they play together in the same match. I think it's a very good way. We are in advance for many people, for for many sports for 30 years. To develop, we have just to show the, the spirit. Uh, Petank is very interesting because we, have, we gather everybody, all people, young people, any uh, any origin, ethnic origin, religious origin, they play all together. Exactly. Uh, Mr. Lecoq, uh, you published the works on the importance of sports and its um, profound social value and its impact on individuals. Um, if you have to answer this question, uh, what, what would you be? What would be your answer? I mean, why sport? Uh, the, the international community faced new ge geopolitical contradiction and political conflicts, but uh, one uh, one hundred and thirty years ago, it was not so easy enough. I'm just uh, say that uh, Pierre de Coubertin was also. Uh, uh, a defender about uh, Olympic culture. Olympic culture is not a technical culture about sport. Olympic culture is more that technical aspect, and it, it means an ethical aspect to be always renewed with all people who are participate to uh, to sport, so petanque and other and other uh, sport. Professor Wang, we know that one of the top uh, priorities of China's foreign policy making is to build a community uh, with common destiny, otherwise known as a community of shared future for mankind. Um, how do you see the role of China in promoting the Olympic spirit going forward? First of all, I think the Olympic Games uh, with under the uh, same uh, uh, five rings flag, the Olympic Games flag, and also with the national flags. So the community of shared future, that means you uh, respect the sovereignty. Uh, but go beyond that, we live in the same uh, uh, planet, it's on the same boat. So we should uh, work together uh, to uh, to face you know, the difficulty to deal with the challenges. I think that's the first. And the second, uh, the Olympic Games actually is not just for athletics, it's for excellency, but also for uh, national pride and also for human humankind. Uh, that we also, the innovation, we should uh, actually, uh, have more innovation and the technology and the system and ideas to uh, to deal with the challenges. And also the Committee of Shared Future highlights the principles of the inclusiveness, the true multilateralism, whether the poor country and uh, a strong country and a rich country, uh, I think that we are, we are fair and equal competition. I think that's very important. Okay, Mr. Lecoq, what's your understanding of this Chinese proposal building a community of shared future? For me, uh, I want to develop three aspects of uh, what I'm calling uh, fully inclusive physical activity. First aspect is uh, cohesion, to maintain the unity and solidarity of Olympic spirit. Second aspect is uh, uh, to allow accessible sport to everyone and to promote play and joy. And third uh, aspect is offer a physical practice tailored to each person's needs. Everyone must be able to find sport practice 
suit to their potential abilities and skills. And then Olympic culture are based on a new alliance where everyone is concerned by the motto stronger together. Claude, what do you think? China is a one of the most, perhaps the most important uh, country for sport. And we have a special spirit, I say just before, that uh, for us, you are Confucius, but you're also a modern country. And uh, because you are the, one of the most important country in sport, because France is the beginning of a new Olympic Games, we have to work together. France and China, I think it's uh, the best pillars to uh, to work together for all, all, uh, all in the world. But I think our two countries have to, to work more and more together. Okay, one last exactly. question to each of you. Um, what is the most important legacy of uh, Mr. Piel Begubek done? Uh, let me start with you, Professor Wang. I think the um, harmonies uh, between the physics and the spirit uh, for the all human beings, no one left behind. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Mr. Lecoq, what do you think? First word will be uh, with me close to the world harmony. Second will be the concept of art because art is uh, also an uh, important uh, aspect uh, in the uh, thinkings of Pierre de Coubertin. And also I want to perhaps to conclude <clears throat> to, to think that Pierre de Coubertin was mainly an educator. And for him, sport was a, a step to develop the uh, an integral education from for youth and other people, and sport is not an uh, an uh, is not the end of the history. Uh, sport is a, a way to to jump higher, uh, to be educated in the best way and in our exchange, and to develop some uh, uh, contact between uh, China and France. Mm, yeah, taking up some sport, that's so important. I wish my daughter could hear this. Uh, gentlemen, listen, thanks so much for joining us. Um, I hope to have you back on our show again and um, thank best you. luck to Team France. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Professor Wang, as well. Thank you for your time. That'll do it for this special edition of Olympic Manifesto 130 Years On. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Wang Guan in Beijing. Our news coverage continues on CGTN.